We all know how annoying knockoff has been ever since it got buffed in Gen 6, not least of all because it gets spammed absolutely everywhere. That's not the knockoff we're talking about today. Today we are going over the knockoff that was not used on every single team, but on the occasions it did show up, it was a great move even though it was a measly 20 base power. We are going over knockoff in generations 3, 4, and 5. So I have chosen a single Pokemon from each of those generations that is the primary knockoff user of its respective metagame. So we'll start with the generation where knockoff was introduced, Gen 3. Now, thanks to the physical special split and Gen 3 being based off type, the knockoff is a special move. So it's really not used for any sort of damage because the primary user is Hariyama, whose special attack set is, of course, awful. Now, the thing about knockoff in Gen 3 is that none of the OU Pokémon get it, so you have to venture into some more unconventional guys if you want to use it, and as you can see, none of these are really OU viable, so Hariyama is by far the best one. And we're gonna look at the OU list, no knockoff users here. So, as you can see then, Hariyama is not even, doesn't have much competition at all. There is one other knockoff user. I am going to go over other potential knockers, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> in, um, in each generation, but uh, the ones I've chosen are absolutely the primary knockoff users in their respective metagame. So let's get out, now that we have that out of the way, let's move on. So why Hariyama, other than it just has the best combination of typing and stats? Well, if all you wanted was a knockoff Pokemon, you would use Abra, but you don't want to just use knockoff. You want a good Pokemon, and Hariyama, as a bulky defensive fighting type, is a great counter to Tyranitar, the best Pokemon in advance and its stab fighting is also able to chase off Snorlax and Blissey. The primary use is knockoff, but you want it to get in on a lot of Pokemon that it can threaten, so it can remove leftovers. And force sand damage, because this is going to be a recurring theme in this video. All of Gens 3 through 5 have permanent sand. Now, I don't know if it was a coincidence that they removed permanent weather in the same generation they buffed knockoff, but that is the primary reason why you use knock, because permanent sand is absolutely everywhere in these three generations, and by removing leftovers on a lot of top tier OU Pokemon that rely on them to not get chipped down by sand every turn, like in advance, Suicune and Zapdos are big examples, then you open up a new avenue of offensive pressure. Even if you're running a defensive team, you're still going to be trying to wear your opponent down through passive damage, and suddenly Zapdos and Suicune and Blissey and Celebi are losing health just for being on the field during Sand. So, since Sand is absolutely everywhere, then it's great, especially because Hariyama also gives you defensive utility in handling Tyranitar. With Brick Break even Okoing it, you know, defensive Pokemon generally ground types and Stab Earthquake, that doesn't Oko Tar unboosted, but Hariyama does that. So, uh, it's pretty simple. We will have example replays for all of these, and we'll get to the Hariyama one. But for now, you can see why Hariyama has such great defensive use. And it's not just that it threatens out T-Tar, Snorlax, and Blissey. It's that it doesn't have that many weaknesses. Psychic, sure, and Flying, sure, but it's still incredibly hard to KO. So it can stay in on a bunch of things like Swampert and Skarmory and Moltres uh, because it also has thick fat so its list of resists grows a little bit to uh, include Fire and Ice as well which is also nice when switching into Fire Blasting and Ice Beaming Mixtar and uh, does nice stuff like resist Heracross, Megahorn, some people like to run HP Flying on their Hariyama and there are other moves you can throw in there but this is generally a good standard. Uh, the old standard used to be Cross Chop. I think it's pretty unreliable. I would just stick with Brick Break. So uh, these are uh, there are a lot of non-sand immune Pokemon in Gen 3, and of course they rely on leftovers to not 
get worn down by Trantar Sand, as we know. And of course, some of them uh, get by, like Choice Band Salamence is affected by sand, but it makes up for that with its power. But even just removing a Choice Band is really nice, or a Lumberry. So uh, Pokemon can be status like a Metagross. Like Metagross, if it's not, if it doesn't have lefties, then uh, removing its item isn't as big a deal because it's still going to be susceptible to chip damage, like you know, a stray brick break or spikes. But removing uh, its item, you know, removing the choice band or the lum or the you know salic or whatever, that can be really valuable. So uh, Pariyam is really bulky and it knocks everything off. So, I mean, Sandstorm is incredibly strong, and when you think about it in Gen 3, God, I really gotta make that passive damage video, but when you think about it, then, you know, every non partial at least partial rock, steel, and ground type taking damage every turn, 16, or, uh, not 16, 1 16th of your health, or 6.25%, does not seem like a lot, but it racks up quickly, and uh, on Hariyama team, on defensive Hariyama teams, at least, then... It, uh, it then they tend to play longer games, and you know if you're trying to outstall them with a Suicune or something, it becomes a lot harder when you have to rest a lot quicker because you're losing health in sand. So uh, there are offensive Hariyama variants, and they can be great as an offensive tool that can remove leftovers from Pokemon that would wall it, like Celebi. But you know this is the standard Hariyama. So. Uh, of course, generally, you don't want to be taking Brick Breaks, so you go to like a fighting immune Pokemon, or a fighting resist Pokemon, so something like Celebi or Claydol, whoops, let's undo that. But yeah, them taking, them taking a knockoff is bad, bad news. And even a sand immune Pokemon, like Skarmory losing leftovers, that makes it so much more susceptible to repeated hits. Also, the EVs can be whatever, as long as you max defense. Uh, this is just something I landed on a couple months ago. So, uh, Hariyama has some other great traits like Whirlwind, a phasing move, that's always really nice, especially with spikes, so you're doing things like dragging T-Tar in and making it run away again, or even better, drag in something that's sand immune, so, or not sand immune, rather, so that you have knocked, so, um, like Celebi, if you drag it in, make it take spikes, because you are going to want this Hariyama with spikes almost all the time. Just about always, in fact, I would say. Then uh, you can make them take leftover or without leftovers, then they're going because Hariyama can take a defensive Celebi Psychic and a pinch and rest up, and I like Wish Blissey support with it as well. But you can um, trying to cut down on my um, so I'm trying to think before I speak. But you can force them in with the spikes in the sand, and you can just switch around without wasting your own PP, and they're running out of their recovery PP pretty quickly, and it becomes a lot easier to play around. It's also nice for things like Suicune, a lot of defensive teams don't like Suicune, and especially when it starts sleep talking and Skarmory's not able to take it, but Hariyama's able to cripple it permanently. It's about the idea of permanent damage. You know, when you toxic something, that's nice, but they can rest it off, or, you know, Heal Bell or Natural Cure or whatever, but Knock Off, there's no coming back from that. So, uh, when you knock off the Suicune's leftovers and suddenly it's in a world of pain, like if it was subject to an experience with Walter from the Big Lebowski. And, you know, you phase it around with spikes down and it's just an enormous pain. And something like a Gengar, which should have Levitate in its abilities. Like, Gengar relies on leftovers to not die to sand, and if you manage to knock off a Gengar, the game pretty much ends as far as I'm concerned. I mean, not actually, you still have to play, but still. And uh, Hariyama's bulky, so you can even take an HP flying from a non-banded uh, Salamence or Gyarados and stuff like that. So you can switch it on Porygon 2 and Regice all day long. Hell, you even switch into Moltres decently. And you can switch into Milotic. And Hariyama is very good against I mean, pretty much every team, honestly. Even offense, where you would think, oh, the fast pace, you know, it's slow, doesn't have great recovery, but still checks T-Tar, knockoff is still nasty, even if all you do is remove a Metagross's Lumberry. Now your Gengar can Will-O-Wisp it, or your Blissey can T-Wave or Sing it, or whatever you're running. So, uh, yeah, it's still really irritating. You obviously can't send your Zapdos into it, or your Ments, and it can just be used as a great utility check. However, it really shines in longer games, of course, like against uh, opposing defensive teams. And especially those teams that are anti-defense. Uh, so 
what I mean by that is a lot of people like to spam Scar and Bliss because it's pretty automatic and you'll have a decent matchup at worst against pretty much everything. So some people like to run Magneton and Claydol teams that are super slow and they throw in guys like Snorlax and uh, Suicune and Milotic and you know, Jirachi and Celebi. And those are pretty much single-handedly destroyed by Hariyama. So uh, try it out for yourself. I really do recommend it. And it's not going to be used on every single team. Knockoff is still niche, but it's got a lot of great, great defensive utility. I mean, the Heracross Megahorn switching, that's so nice. And being able to switch into T-Tar is great, not only because it doesn't get ruined by an HP grass like it's uh, like Swampert would, but it means that your water type that you're running alongside Hariyama doesn't have to deal with Tyranitar. So let's say Metagross booms on your water, doesn't matter. Hariyama's still here to counter the tar. Or let's say that you don't have to switch your water into T-Tar and eat a CB Earthquake or whatever, because uh, actually you don't want Hariyama taking too many of those, but it's good. But once you know it's CB, then you can play around Tar a different way. And most other Tar sets, Hariyama just dominates. Anyway, point being that you don't need to risk your Swampert to an HP Grass because you can just throw in Hariyama against Tar. So it's great at easing up pressure on your teammates, on your other crucial walls to keep them healthy for Salamence and whatnot, and it's uh, great at enabling a divide and conquer kind of strategy. So uh, there's Hariyama, so any other knock users in OU? Not in OU, but in BL, Armaldo. So this is just a quick thing, we're not going to go over this. And this is not a very standard thing, but Hariyama is a sand immune knockoff Pokemon. And its niche is pretty much that it, uh, you can't use knockoff and rapid spin on the same set, unfortunately, or it would be amazing. But pretty much what this set does is wall Snorlax eternally because you have battle armor, so you can't be crit, and you just harden and stall its curses and knockoff and seismic toss, and it's pretty brutal. So, still gimmicky, but yeah. So, example replay. I'm going to be extremely narcissistic here because the only real example of Hariyama, or defensive Hariyama, at least, or even, yeah, in the most recent days, or most recent couple months, is this game I had against Conflict and SPL, and I did a whole video on it, so we're not going to go over it too long, but uh, pretty much what you see here is what Hariyama does. That Starmie loses the leftovers. Now it has it has 32 recovers, but it's forced to burn through them a lot quicker because you're thinking, oh, 6%, that'll take forever to take hold. Well, my team can switch around a lot, and we're going to skip the hell out of this game. But uh, my team can switch around a lot and last a long time, and I'm going to outlast him. So uh, you see it already. Skarm is spiking, and Starmie comes in, and what does it do? It has to choose between healing and rapid spinning, and eventually it's going to heal, so it gets super outlasted. So uh, this kind of bulky team, you know, not necessarily a stall team, just a bulky team that takes its time. Hariyama shines in this kind of matchup and just threatens. It doesn't even threaten KOs, but it threatens to really ruin other Pokemon. It's almost a KO in and of itself. Like, if Zapdos gets knocked, then it is toast. Because other it can't pressure stall nearly as easily when I can just switch around it. So and Starmie here too. So, oh, it's just in a very very not so good spot. So uh, we have to skip through this, but I want to get through it because Hariyama went hero mode in this game, and See, like, it's thre it's switching into Zapdos, and it's threatening a knockoff. Oh, I guess he wasn't afraid of the knockoff. I thought he would be. That's just why I switched to Blissey. I don't know. This was months ago. But, yeah, that was uh, the idea. Was I sleeping or something? No, I wasn't. So, yeah, this is the wish Blissey to support the Hariyama. So, when Titar comes in on Blissey, then I just heal Hariyama for free. So... Yada yada yada, a lot of stuff happens. Yeah, okay, so there was a... Uh, let me switch. I whirlwinded here, and that's because I expected a switch, and Hariyama can rack up a lot of damage with spikes, but he just tried to counter, and I just wished I had knocked off the Blissey. 
So wished I had done a lot more knocking off. So see here, Starmie again. That knockoff is super, super permanent. And even when I don't touch the Starmie, it's in trouble. Whereas normally, Recover Starmie is incredibly annoying to deal with. And the thing is that nothing else wants to take a knockoff. See, I mean, Titar doesn't want to stay in on Hariyama. Zapdos gets ruined. Metagross, then it loses its leftovers. Can't handle stuff like Tyranitar and Arrow anymore. Blissey, God no. Salamence, absolutely not. So it really is just Starmie. So it was absolutely a win-win for me. So, and uh, Metagross loses its knockoff, or loses its lefty. So now it's on a timer too. And... That's what I guess that's what pressured him to explode. See, this this Starmie, I mean, 25 recoveries doesn't seem like much, but in a game that's going as long as this one, it's going to rack up real, real quick. Because, I mean, I'm not even touching it. See, I, I mean, I size me toss it once in a while, but look at the last several turns. I've gone, see, I, like four or five turns in a row without touching it, and it's losing so much health. And, you know, I switch around and it's still pressure on it, so I, I'm not using PP, and yeah. Uh, if you've seen my video where I went over this past SPL for myself, then uh, apologies, but I, this is about Hari, or this is about knockoff, so you see just why it's so powerful. And why something like Armaldo would be similarly good. So, uh, see, Hariyama does it again. There, that was not related to Hariyama, but it was awesome nonetheless because Brick Break, Okoing Tar with a zero investment Yama is just awesome. So, if you want this game analyzed more in depth, then uh, SPL video on my channel. SPL 11, to be specific. So, look, spikes down, Yama, knockoff, just pressuring the Starmie, just whirlwinding, trying to. You know, make, get him to make a mistake, and see, I'm not touching the Starmie at all, and it just keeps, its health keeps going down. I'm switching to Skarmory and Blissey, getting lefties back on my Skarm, and it's, and Starmie's losing health and burning recovers, and it's down to 17 now. I mean, recover PP really is absurd, and this is why I love Wish Blissey, I mean, in general, Wish Blissey is just incredible, but it especially is useful with Hariyama, because Hariyama doesn't heal very well, so... In comes Zapdos, goodbye, lefties are gone there, so, so, you know, it's just, and look, Hariyama comes in on Blissey all day long, because it's got that massive HP stat of 455, over 400, even if you don't invest, and if you go max, which you usually shouldn't, then you're not going to break 500, but it's still pretty meaty, so, uh, yeah, Zapdos came in on the... Or no, I just switched out. Now, yeah, see, now Zapdos is getting absolutely ruined. And... Yeah, it's just a matter of... Well, there was a lot of other switching. We don't care. We just want to see Hariyama's... Because Hariyama... See, now even a Palchi Brick Break, which would otherwise... You know, if I, I'm just brick breaking a Zapdos for 15%, then that's, you know, win for Zapdos. But, you know, with Sand, then... Uh, with knockoff in the picture, then... Yeah, see, I mean, I'm not touching the Zapdos, and it's just... I'm not touching the Zapdos, I don't care about being full parrot on Starmie. It's just a wonderful thing. And now suddenly the Zapdos that was annoying my Swampert so much is just for naught, so... Yada yada, see, look at this, whirlwinding in, Blissey, it, it just uh, whirlwinded it, I'm not going to go back because it's going to make my computer freeze, but it whirlwinded Blissey in several times and Blissey had to run from it because it gets knocked or brick broken and racks up spike damage and even though Starmie comes in, thanks to Hariyama, then knock off, wonderful. So, uh, whirlwind, get in this, and... Rest, one turn, yeah, you have to have a defensive team to make up for not having, for having to rest sometimes. Uh, you could probably fit in like a Heal Bell Salvi or something. Which would also, a heal, Leech Seed, I really wanted Leech Seed on, uh, I tested a bunch of Hariyama teams and I really wanted Leech Seed because Leech Seed alongside Spikes and Sand and no lefties, uh, with that's just dirty, so I really wanted that but was unable to fit it. So here's something else. So one more thing. I'm like, wait, well, the Salamence is the only remaining threat. So 
what if Hariyama just knocked it off and now, you know, game over. It's essentially KO'd, so... Uh, yeah. And see, Starmie's running out of recovers and he's like, you know what, I just, I'm... At this point, he was pretty much done anyway, but... Yeah, so Hariyama just... Uh, knocks off the Blissey too, so Whirlwind and... And it finishes off the game in fitting fashion. So in this game, then Hariyama Brick Break KO'd two Pokemon and knocked off five. Even though the knockoff on Blissey wasn't really important at that point. It knocked off everything. So yeah, that's Hariyama and that's knockoff. And that's what it does. Uh, yeah, a lot of people like Claydol alongside Hariyama because Claydol's not the most ironclad T-Tar check, but it doesn't really matter when you have Hariyama owning T-Tar. So, and the Rabbit Spin support is really nice for Blissey, for, um, Blissey too, but for Hariyama to be able to stick around. And that is nice, and I did consider that, but, uh, I just had problems with CB Mens and the way that the team was structured, so. Yeah, there's that, and we move on to Gen 4 with Hariyama being awesome. And if you want to see Armaldo in action, I recommend asking Vapicuno. Maybe he can make a video about it. Or uh, Ostomatitos. Anyway, Gen 4. Now, I'm sure you know Clefable on for now. Clefable's knockoff is incredible because it makes it so that uh, the oppo the opposition is taking damage from sand and rocks and everything while well, it is not. And even something like a Gliscor uh, losing its leftovers is huge. Because now it has to manually roost off Stealth Rock and Seismic Tosses and it's just dirty. And I'm not going to go into this one too far because I'm going to be even more narcissistic and not just use a replay of mine but an entire video of mine. This video goes over Clefable in excruciating length and it has a ton of replays of just how knockoff Clefable works. I've ranted about it a lot on this channel so I'm sure you know about it but if you don't then consult this video and uh, the EVs can be whatever and run calm if your last move is Ice Beam of course but uh, yeah rocks, Encore, Counter, Wish, Protect, whatever it's dirty. It knocks off everything and, you know, stuff that doesn't get affected, stuff that is affected by sand hates it, stuff that is affected by sand hates it. A lot of the time, Clefable is forced to switch into other Clefable and eat knock and trade knockoffs. And if you can get the knockoff onto the other Clef without conceding it on your own, then it's great because suddenly the opposing Clef has to manually heal. One of the reasons Clef is so good is that it doesn't have to heal off rocks and sand and whatever. It can just constantly be on the offensive in a way, and you know, when you remove its leftovers, it's still incredibly irritating, but it helps. So yeah, I, uh, Clef really, I, I would just talk at length about it, but this video already covers it. Let me just go to the replay. Well, before I skip to the replays of knockoff being annoying, I'll go over some other knockoff users. Uh, DVP has a wider variety. Gliscor mainly is a great one. Now, uh, oh, I should mention that one of the reasons Breloom is great, I mean, Breloom was already an amazing Pokemon, but when Clefable started spamming knockoff, then it, uh, re well, Breloom was great because, well, if you knock off Breloom's Toxic Orb before it activates, then you just ruin it, but that doesn't happen because people are careful. But that's another reason Breloom is so nice against Clef, is that it is immune to knockoff. It's still going to heal once it's poisoned, even if it loses its Toxic Orb. And that is actually a strategy that is seen a lot in black and white with Poison Heal Gliscor. But for now, it's just Breloom and, you know, Seismitas is still annoying because Clef, but that's one example of knockoff. And that is another reason why some people like uh, Curse Gastrodon, because it does not care about knockoff thanks to Sticky Hold. So, uh, yeah, although that is still very, very specific in Nation, generally everything is just getting knocked and annoyed. That's why good teams need answers on how to deal, answers for Clefable. And there are a lot of other ways to make knockoff effects felt even more, like Encore and uh, Protect being the most obvious, but yeah, Thunder Wave is also a great one. And uh, although that was not more direct knockoff abuse as much as just a good move, but just wanted to be thorough on the move slots. But yeah, uh, there's that. 
and use uh, make sure that if you're using knockoff Liscord, which is amazing uh, for like Bronzong and Skarmory and Clef and you know Waters, you know EVs can be whatever. Then make sure you have a very 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 sturdy answer to Breloom. And I usually use this on a team I have with Celebi, so I'm you know set there. But uh, you can't just slap this uh, set on any team. So. Other knockoff users, I mean, there are all sorts of stuff you can mess around with, like Azelf and Uxi and Spitef and Polion is a great one. Uh, it, well, the moves can you know, vary. You can run Surf. It's kind of like a Spitef Heatran with knockoff, which is really good. And it owns Latios, of course. And the last move can be Stealth Rock, Toxic, or a Roar, whatever you like. Spitef generally preferred. Right, just make it sure it's fine. So yeah, um, Polion's nice. Don't you don't use Sassy. That's the default because Showdown's thing is used to Gen six and up. But this is not an offensive weapon. Do don't cut into your speed, which is the same as Clefables. So uh, there's other. I mean, like there, there you can toy with Mamoswine and whatnot. But those are the biggest ones. And of course, uh, Knockoff is really great in this generation because there's so much more passive damage. I should mention that, and not only is there permanent sand like and uh, spikes like the previous generation, there's also Stealth Rock, which is on a lot of teams. I mean, a lot of knockoff Clefables, most annoying teams don't even have spikes, just the Stealth Rock, which should be on every team anyway. And of course, there's other options like Toxic Spikes, I mean, talk about an accelerated death. So uh, yeah. There's that, and Tentacru I think Tent Knockoff Tentacruel is great, but it's not a common metagame Pokemon, so there's that. Uh, Weavile doesn't use it because Weavile doesn't get used in general, and it's just, yeah. So I don't think I'm forgetting anything too crucial. I mean, there's fun stuff. I think Knockoff Donphan's fantastic. I think Drapion's okay. Let me just search up Knockoff. I think it's pretty good on Uxi, too. Uh, Gengar has some nice use for it, uh, definitely. Scizor doesn't, so, you know, Galliot and Heracross aren't going to be using it, I don't think, so. and the rest is just kind of whatever. I mean, I guess Scizor could, but, and Venusaur, I think, has potential for it, too, but uh, for the most part, it's these three, and for the most part, it's this thing, so I'll just, uh, the replays are all in here, and you can also just see the skimmed version of here when, you know, knockoff Clefable is just... The worst, like in this game in particular, Heist versus Ladybug, it's just yikes. I wonder if Ladybug was the inspiration for Ladybird. Anyway, so there is uh, that as Clefable's effects are constantly widespread. Oh, look, there's me. And yeah, knock off Clefable, ruin Zapdos, and just everything. I mean, look at uh, for it's definitely not as pronounced against offense as Hariyama is. But Clefable's still incredibly useful in, you know, removing a life orb or something. That can actually be counterintuitive, because you want it to die faster, but you're also not dealing with the power trade-off, so you can switch Hippo into a Mixed Knight more easily, or something like that. So, I think it's, yeah, it's really hard to switch into safely. Uh, pretty much impossible, and that's one reason why Clef is so good, among the many others. So, finally, Gen 5. So, the primary user here is Ferrothorn. Now, I'll mention quickly that Gliscor can usually can use it sometimes. The problem is that Gliscor no longer runs Leftovers in this gen, it runs Toxicor Poison Heal. So, once its poison is up, then, you know, it walls itself. So, if the opponent has, a not, has their own Gliscor, then you just permanently wall it. So, there's that. Uh, that said, it can be very annoying against non gliscor teams. And as for other knockoff po so you run Earthquake and Protect and knockoff. Another problem is that Gliscor generally wants more moves, whereas Ferrothorn, the most premier user of the move in Gen 5, doesn't really, really care for it. So, you know, you want Taunt, you want Toxic, you want uh, a lot. Ice Fang, so it can d definitely be ugly. But, yeah, there's that. And as for other knockers... There I go again, saying knockers. You know, Zam's not using it. Conk doesn't get used. Donphan doesn't get used. Gengar doesn't get used. Lando can use it. Like, it gets used very, very, very sparingly on Scarf, not on Gliscor. 
because you have Intimidate, and you also have three moves that you always use, EQ, U-Turn, HP, Ice, and the last move can be Stone Edge, Superpower, Stealth Rock, whatever. So you can run Knock Off and just annoy Skarmory with Rocky Helmet. So it's, it's, fi it's uh, feasible. And another thing that Gliscor has to do now is be very wary of Lead Off Lando and Lead Off Ferrothorn because it needs to protect or sub if you have it, but that's pretty much extinct now and they all run protect. And uh, it has to be very careful on that first turn or it will get knocked off and, you know, that's not good, obviously. So that's another, that's another way Knock Off hasn't impacted Black and White. As for other users, I have seen it um, on, not on Reuniclus or Scizor. And Tentacruel just, Tentacruel is amazing, but I don't think it can spare the move slots. Uh, it's already very, very cramped, so it wouldn't get used on Tentacruel. I have seen Finch use it on Thunderous Therian, and maybe not Thunderous, no, Tornado. I know we use it on Tornadus, but I'm not sure if Thunderous Therian or not. And uh, mainly then, oh, my champ gets knockoff in Gen 4, in Gen 5, but not in Gen 4. Wow, today I learned. I guess it, I knew it had it in like the lower tiers of the new gens, but I was gonna say, there's no way we overlooked that until now. So uh, th after that validation, then we go down to, yeah, Tornadus. I think this is a great one because it removes things like Rotom. The set can be whatever, you know, you can run Lefties or Sharp Beak or whatever you like. U-turn, Focus Blast, Taunt, whatever, yada yada. But uh, the primary the primary reason you're running it is because it removes Rotom Wash's lefties, meaning it's getting worn down really fast with rocks and U-turn, and the next time it's not going to be able to take a hurricane with those rocks up. And it removes Tornadus, or sorry, Tyranitar's Chopple. So it just gets run over by Focus Blast from this and uh, Thunderous Therian. And so rather than have to hit two Focus Blasts, or Super Power actually, which is really good, then... Uh, then you just knock it off and then superpower. So you do that. And it's also good for random stuff like Gastrodon or Jellicent or Heatran that might try to take some hits. Really make those hazards sting. And, I mean, if you thought Tornius was hard to wall before, I mean, you know how annoying Assault Vest Torn T is in Gen 6 and, you know, any Torn is in Gen 7 with its knockoff spamming. So this is kind of... It's a more, it's a much more offensive approach because it makes it so much more difficult to deal with, especially the Heatran. If you not, if you nail a Heatran with knockoff, it's devastating. Especially, which is another reason Ferrothorn likes it. But we'll get to that. And uh, knockoff, U-turn, superpower, and yeah, uh, you oh you remove Spedef Scarm's lefties if it stays in. Uh, not that that is really a set, but uh, and most Scarms prefer Rocky Helmet, but yeah. Okay, so Knock Off Ferrothorn, the creation of which in black and white I attribute to Sweepage. And the primary reason, I mean, look, you can talk about Knock Off's other benefits on Ferrothorn, and I'll list them now. Nailing Heatran is great, you know, Tentacruel, Rotom Wash as it tries to burn you, that's huge. You remove Rotom's lefties, you take so much away from it, especially in Sand, especially if you manage to status it with something else, it's just toast. However, the number one reason you run knockoff Ferrothorn is for other Ferrothorn. And that is because it is impossible to deal with Ferrothorn with so many Pokemon. And just switching in, you know, eating Leech Seed, it's just horrible. So what people have been doing for the last couple of years, starting with Sweep, is they're like, you know what, I won't have my Leech Protect Ferrothorn anymore. I'm going to sacrifice my own Ferrothorn to make sure I don't lose to others. And uh, let me give you an example of why this is so important. Let's take a standard rain team of Politoed, Tendacruel, uh, Tornadus, you know, Thunderous, Therian, and Keldeo. Or, you know, you can change this to Latios, which is the more standard. You can throw in your Thunderous, or your Landorus, Thunderous, Tornadus, whatever. So, you know, let's just throw in Thunder, Tornadus because we were talking about it and uh, whatever, your Toxic Curse and whatnot. So, you know, let's take these, and let's say Ferrothorn gets in on Politoed or, you know, uh, Latios, and uh, and here's my question. What switches into the Leech Seed? 
nothing. It's going to leech protect, power whip your entire team. And the only thing that can switch in is Ferrothorn. You know, and Ferrothorn has always set up on itself ever since the dawn of black and white. But with knockoff, then you actually get something out of it other than, all right, we're going to rock, so we're going to get up spikes. And starting in black and white 2, when Ferrothorn could run all three of rock, spikes, and leech seed on the same set, whereas before it had to pick two, then it was like, all right, now we're just going to try and make the other guy waste his leech seeds and get my own leech seed off when they switch. It's just very ugly, switching into max hazards and leech seed. So it's like, you know what? I'm taking this Ferrothorn down with me. And that is a lot of what Black and White revolves around, especially with Rain. I mean, it's not just restricted to Rain, as we'll see in a second from replays, but you know, it's incredibly crucial. So now we do have replays. The first that don't involve me. Anyway, so here we see some Rain teams that are a little non-standard, but still solid. And you see my point. Nothing like uh, switching into Ferrothorn here. I mean, the closest is Celebi, which still doesn't like eating hazards, and it won't get uh, affected by Leech Seed, but it's not going to be doing much damage. It's a free switch to Latios, so you don't want and you're going to get knocked yourself. So, as we see here, very, very quickly, then both players go to their Ferrothorn, and they have no choice but to stay in and knock, and if either of them did not have knock, then it would affect their team in a majorly, in a hugely negative way, so... And then they just get up their hazards. You know, maybe he has, uh, rock, maybe Askoff has rocks on something else, but still getting up the spikes. And now they just, uh, they, they, have to, they have no choice but to stay in and knock off, knock each other off. And, you know, as long as the Ferrothorn is chipped, then someone is willing to play more aggressive and make use of it to get rid of the hazards. And a lot of strategies in Black White center around crippling Ferrothorn, usually through knockoff, sometimes through Rotom Will O Wisp. In which case, uh, Ferrothorn should knock off the Rotom first to permanently cripple it before getting up its hazards that are likely to get spun anyway. You're going to try and get them up later. But, point being that uh, it's all about crippling the Ferrothorn and dealing with it otherwise, because an unrestricted Ferrothorn is just the worst. So that's why you see so much stuff like Magnazone and a Rotom plus Excadrill. Or, most of the time on Rain, you, you have no choice but to just knock each other, and nothing switches in safely, really, besides Ferrothorn. So you just try to cripple the other one. So, I mean, I, I think Askoff's uh, spike, or rather spinning, was incredibly hasty. Or a knocking off spamming, uh, knock off spamming against uh, Solwyn's Ferrothorn. But, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, now that that's over, we'll go to another example, and our final example, and that how crucial this can be even with sand. So, you see already, you, already you see here that, uh, I mean, this leads to another video, Ferrothorn's influence on Black and White. Maybe I'll save that for the 10th anniversary of Black and White in the fall, though. Anyway, so uh, Latios, Crippling, Ferrothorn, yada yada. So uh, Twixtree gets out of there, doesn't want to take a trick, goes to Heatran, lets that trick. But uh, let's take the example of Twixie's Heatran, if it didn't get tricked, if he went to Titar or something later, which he didn't because he needs to preserve the Chopel for Alakazam's Focus Blast. But, you know, it, let's just say, for argument's sake, then later... Twixtree is going to have Ferrothorn in on Ferrothorn, right? That's just going to happen. We know it because it's going to deal with Rotom and Latios, yada yada. And eventually he would have to switch out of the Ferrothorn. And, uh, you know, he's probably going to be burned because of the Rotom. But eventually he's going to have to switch out and go to his own Heatran. And if his own Heatran gets knocked, that's horrible. I mean, a Leech Seed is one thing, especially with Hazards up. No getting around that. But a knock, that's just... That's horrible because later it means that even if it's not afflicted with a leech seed, whenever Heatran comes in later, just taking Stealth Rock or whatever, it's it, it won't be able to withstand the Draco Meteor nearly as well. It'll make uh, the offensive pressure from Frania's team a lot more dangerous. So, see now Fairthorn comes in and immediately knock off. He's not missing any single chance to get that one off. And now he's like, could I go to Heatran? No, I need hazards. So. And now he goes to his Tran, who he doesn't mind losing lefties because it's already lost it to Latios. So, and that's another, here's another example. If he manages to come in on a Hydro Pump aimed at Heatran, uh, then, you know, let's ignore the Alakazam stuff because it's not important for, to illustrate the Ferrothorn idea. Then, uh, if Ferrothorn comes in on Rotom in a one-on-one, -on -one, Rotom's going to want to burn it. And, you know, in most cases, like, let's say there's an extra drill and he wants to spin on it, then... 
he's gonna want to burn it, and Ferrothorn's knockoff can even cripple Rotom. So, you know, once Sand goes up, and especially since it got burned from Lava Plume, and that's not at all uncommon with all the Scalds and Will-O-Wisps and Lava Plumes running around, or Toxics uh, as well, then on top of Sand, then, you know, Rotom itself is very cooked. Rotom already is, is famously uh, not... It's famously not a more longevity-centered Pokemon. Um, even with leftovers. You know, in longer games against stall teams, it's got a super annoying paint split, but, you know, against more offensive stuff, it tends to be at its best in the early game. And with knockoff, you make it even... You know, you remove the possibility of it. All right, I'm going to force this thing out one last time and throw it at him. It's like, no, it's that's already gone. That window closed very quickly. So, yeah. Uh, it's... Uh, Having a 100% move to finish off Sam is nice too. And now we see Frania's Ferrothorn. And it's... That didn't really uh, affect much. Actually, if it... Actually, if uh, the... If this Ferrothorn was Leech Protect, then it very possibly could have wound up making this game... Uh, different but yeah that's not important so that has been knockoff in generations three through five so i hope this was informative to you guys and i hope you took something from it and uh yeah knockoff was am amazing and important even before uh even before it got buffed to hell so yeah there's no shortage of usage for it ever, just because, again, passive damage, but Hariyama in general is just an amazing Pokemon, as we saw when the Comedian went knocking everything off and uh, breaking some bricks on top of that. So, yeah, Hariyama gives a lot of standard teams a lot of problems, so if we're, we want to look up Knockoff one more time, uh, there's some argument for Knockoff Zam in advance because it ruins Blissey, but I don't think it's very good. Uh, I think it's gimmicky-ish. And I toyed around with the knockoff bayonet just because it's a ghost type with a will o wisp and knockoff. And, you know, if I wanted a will o wisp and ghost type, I would just use Gengar. But knockoff is what makes it knockoff. And there, I think there's actually uh, some knockoff Kabutops potential in DPP. I used that a long time ago. And it was quite good. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's that. Sableye has knockoff and recover, but no wisp in this gen. So, kind of, eh. Anyway, so we're going to call it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you took something from this and that you enjoyed. And yeah, I will catch you next time. What a weird sounding remix. I was, I thought I was uh, scraping the computer with my microphone. All right. Thanks, guys.